Hornets the Apocalypse Episode 3 is out and right away, big improvement over Episode 2, a lot more action, there is honestly no real dimming that is like jarring and no ghosting. And the action in this episode is really good. Now, one thing I have to say is that while last week was slower paced, this week's was a much faster pace, as this actually covered about four chapters of the manga, from chapters four to seven. And the end of this episode starts the very next arc, which is the Echo Gorge arc. I'll get into the events of the episode and stuff that I liked, but overall, this was actually rel relatively well paced, despite it being very fast. And it gets to the main points of this episode and everything that we needed to see and overall just really fun episode i like personal and pelgard's uh fight and their interactions it's legitimately one of my favorite parts about early four nights i say early like this series has gone on for a long time it's only like three years old but the thing that i like about four nights up until like for the main stuff here in season one is that the moments where pelgard is around are some of the best things ever and it feels like the animators really do like pelgard too because his moments you're actually not just well animated, but it just feels like he has more attention just put towards him in comparison to later in the episode where we get Ironside. But enough of the preamble and lead up. Let's get right into the review. But first, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. Really helps it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel. I'll be covering the anime's episodes every single week. And I also do the manga as well if you want to check out stuff for the manga. We've got a big goal of reaching 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I really think we can make it to that goal post. Now then, on with the video. So the thing I liked is when we jumped off from last week, we see Percival realizing that he has awakened his magical power and obviously is very confused as to what this is. And when he mistakes it for something that Pelgar is doing, he goes up to try to give it back to him, but just knocks him flat on his back by mistake as Pelgard is caught off guard. And Pelgard, very impressed with this, considering that now he can actually see Percival's fighting with magic, he himself uses his own magic, which is called Pyre. However, in the manga, it's called Blaze, but either translation is pretty cool. And I like how, as Pelgard is, like, swinging around these fireballs, Percival is, like, jumping and swerving around these, these projectiles, and it is pretty smooth. It's no just cutaway flashes or something like that. There's actual motion, and I like it. I know I'm emphasizing the animation a lot more, but because, again, we had a lot of bad from the last few seasons of Seven Deadly Sins, so just any and all, like, clean animation is just a godsend. So, it's just nice to see. And I just like the way Pelgard's fire is portrayed in the show. Really nice black outlines to emphasize the heat and the smoke. And I like how the fireballs are just twirling around Pelgard as he launches them towards Percival. And... The funny thing is how Percival is just continuously just trying to avoid getting hit with these fireballs until eventually he just decides to spike it into the ground with his magic-infused fists. What I liked is how Pelgard literally just made it so, okay, he dispersed it by putting it into the ground. He then uses all the little bits to engulf Percival in a giant ball of fire to continuously burn him. You know, unless he decides to turn it off if he surrenders. Percival decides not to as he tries to stand back up and covers his body in his magic to protect himself, but even that, he's still getting pretty badly burned. Though, I though the thing that that's of note is Pelgar being very impressed with Percival and his adaptiveness to his magic power throughout this fight. It's then that we notice that a, what's the, a mini Percival has just appeared onto his arm. And we see a huge like mini army of these things just appearing out of nowhere just grabbing onto Pelgard and dispersing his fire by putting his hand down, which is a deactivation for his power, as Percival also ends up healing his wounds as well. And Pelgard is going through all the different magic types, like Destroyer, Enchanter, and even Healer, as then he sees that this is probably the 1 in 10,000 magic type known as Hero type, which allows Percival to use any type of magical attribute or utilization for his powers. And he begins to think, this kid is probably one of the four knights of the apocalypse from the prophecy. And then Percival just casually strolls up to him, just punches him into the ground again so they can keep fighting. But Pelgar gets off, gets up the ground and says, I'm very impressed with you. You'll be my, you'll be very worth training. But then Pelgar just swats away all the many Percivals as he shows that he's been basically holding back this entire time. Donnie realizes this and just levitates Pelgar in the air. And as Donnie and Percival are arguing over what Donnie just did for Percival to run away, 
Pelgard launches a giant explosion of his fire, knocking everybody back and injuring them. And as Pelgard is about to go and just finish the fight and take Percival, the Red Fox from the previous episode shows up, and he basically takes out a spell bead, throws it on the ground, and teleports himself, Percival, and Donnie away, leaving Pelgard bewildered. And they, are, they appear on this giant mountain range called the Dragon's Backbone, as it's like 30 miles away from where they were. As, the, as we then get the, the, the fox, who we learn is Sin, talking to them, saying that, look, you don't have to worry about the knight. Now that you guys are gone, he won't do anything to the village. He tells them that they're going to come with him, as the main reason is that he was sent to them in order to find the Four Knights of the Apocalypse, legendary knights of prophecy that are said to essentially destroy the world, revealing that Percival is one of them, as we get him naming them off as Famine, Pestilence, War, and Death, and that Percival is one of these four knights. He also goes on to say that Pelgard and Ironside are knights that serve an evil king. As we get this explanation, we end up going and transitioning to a whole other plane of existence, as this is actually Camelot. As Pelgard is just walking around and entering a meeting place for all the other holy knights of this area. And as we discuss the four knights of the apocalypse, Pelgard just boisterously comes in, yelling at the top of his logs, how is everybody? Hope you've given up the good work. And as everyone basically ignores him, as he sits next down to Ironside, as these two are actually good friends, and even though they don't act like it half the time and have disagreements, they are good friends. But a mage in the middle of this meeting says that they know more about the Four Knights of, Pro of Prophecy, as they're all supposed to be holding out the princesses, and even more actual visual descriptions of these knights. One is gold, has gold-colored magic, the other has holiness and evil in their eyes, one has no fixed appearance, and the other is a child with verdant, wing-shaped hair, as we get an image of Percival confirming that he is one of the Four Knights of the Apocalypse, with Ironside realizing so he was one of the Four Knights of the Apocalypse. As he's thinking that, hold on, there's no way that kid was one of the Four Knights of the Apocalypse. But he goes on to think that this was a blunder, as he should double-check the pulse just in case he survived. And Pelgar shows up saying that, yeah, this kid was alive, and to think, I thought you might have spared him because he was your son. But <laughs> but yeah, it's honestly a really nice bit of banter. Pelgar just like, look, I know my duty, but it'd be a waste to kill, kill this kid, because we can just take him under our wing and make him an apprentice and make him really strong knight on our side. Pelgar is just very like adamant about training Percival and it's one of the nice things I like about his character is that he just was surprisingly positive about this. Here he has a knight that is supposed to basically destroy his home and, and the person that he's meant to serve. And he's like, yeah, nah, I ain't taking him out. I'm going to make him my apprentice. It just makes him very fun to just see and interact. But as to having their disagreement, Ironside goes off to strike Pelgard as per Pelgard just blocks it. As the two of them just come to an a disagreement and this scene basically ends with Ironside saying that Percival is going to destroy the world based off the prophecy. And I like how Percival's like, yeah, that can't be me. That's not going to be true. I ain't going to destroy the world. And he just says he just after just getting answers from his dad and just traveling across Britannia. It's then that Sin mentions that they serve Camelot, and Donnie just says the whole spiel about how the Demon King and the Demon Clan in the Holy War destroyed Camelot, and Arthur essentially went and along with his advisors and remaining members of his kingdom went into hiding. And the Camelot essentially doesn't exist anymore. But Sin says, yeah, it exists, you just can't get there by normal means. But to get there at first, we, I gotta take you to Leonis, which is going to be the goal for the majority of the season, getting to Leonis, because Sin was sent by the King of Leonis in order to find the Four Knights and bring them there. So they have to travel like 200 something miles to get to this kingdom in order to get more answers. And so they begin their journey and they get off Dragon's Bone. And so Percival, as he's hungry, just decides, let's all go hunting and see who can get the best hunt. But before he goes off, Donnie just takes his bow and arrow because Percival is useless with a bow and arrow. So as Percival is going off, he notices a bunch of rocks piled against each other. And as he like climbs over this rock wall, he notices a huge gorge. As he then just jumps in, going in to try and hunt for something very enthusiastically, as two fairies end up noticing him. Donnie continuously misses to catch any food as Sin basically just banters with him and just calls him, like, you know, a shit hunter, as his arrow, like, goes off somewhere and seemingly hits him. As we meet the giant Dolores, who is a, a nun, and I like how Sin, I said this in my initial chapter reviews, but it's interesting to see a giant that worships the goddess clan and not the earth itself, which is very keen to who, who the giants are and just their way of life. Sin, the two fairies from earlier, tell Dolores about Percival entering the Echo Gorge, 
as she herself reveals that she sealed that whole thing off. And so we end up getting some actual info on the Echo Gorge, and that used to be a lush, beautiful land populated by giants and fairies, until one day it turned into a living hell, as we see Percival running into these ravenous rabbits in this demonic looking tree, effortlessly just taking them all out with just a gleeful smile on his face. It's like, man, this place is like heaven. There's so much prey to, to pray around for me to hunt. He's like, Donnie's gonna get very jealous of this. But he then hears someone in the distance calling for help and to save them. We should then see House at the furthest end of the gorge, as we see a new character introduced, tying up a little creature as it wants to leave. But this person says that they've never seen this creature before and wonder why they're even around because no one comes to Echo Gorge anymore. And so they decided to make make them a guinea pig. This is later revealed to be Nazienz. Now, Nazienz is a pretty important character. You'll notice that he is in the opening. And also, Nazienz is actually a pretty fan favorite character in Fortnite's The Apocalypse, especially in the earlier portions when it comes to this main group of, of interesting characters. And this is his arc, and I do like Echo Gorge, and I like Nazienz as a character. He also has a really interesting quirk where when he gets excited and smiles he like bites his lip to the point where it bleeds but yeah Percival barges into his house he sets this little guy free it runs off and then Percival just gets knocked out by Nazians from behind as Nazians just decides he's gonna make Percival his guinea pig as Donnie, Sin, Dolores and the fairies go off to try and find Percival as they say that Nazians the mad herbalist is seemingly the reason why the forest is the way it is and that's the end of the episode. I kind of went through the whole thing beat by beat, but I just enjoyed the fast pace of this episode and the basic, well, introduction of the main plot points. Getting the four knights together, meeting at Leonis, Sin basically being part of the te of a team that's seemingly supposed to go and find the four knights. We get to see more characters. We get to see Camelot for the first time, this new area of Camelot in seemingly another plane of existence. Pelgar and Ironside interacting and the prophecy with more details of the four knights. And it's just really nice. I am enjoying the anime so far. I'm liking the fast pacing. If my guess is correct, this next arc is probably just gonna be like two episodes because these opening arcs of four knights are very short. I might make a whole video on like where season one will end and what episodes will consist of what chapters. At some point, I might wait till this current arc ends so I can get a better interpretation. But either way, this was a no nice, fun episode. I like the action at the beginning. The pacing is pretty f quick, and I like the interactions between the different characters. And I just think it's been being adapted pretty well. But yeah, I've been enjoying this season so far. I can't wait to see the future arcs because it just gets better from here. And more characters get introduced that I honestly can't wait for you guys to see. If you enjoy these reviews slash commentary on the recent episodes of Fortnite the Apocalypse, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and ensures you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel. I also make content on the manga with theories, chapter reviews, and discussions on everything in these chapters and the series as a whole. And I sometimes revisit Seven Daily Sins for certain aspects of videos and discussions. I also do other anime and manga content that I have planned to do in the future. And I hope you guys look forward to those. But with all that said and done, I hope you all enjoy the video and I hope you all have an awesome day.